um, one other interesting point uh, which uh, I was thinking about the other day is um, I'll show you walk this way now the other thing I wanted to show you was uh, these down here have a look at these What they are, they are um, pouring. So you you simply um, are pouring a, a thick paint, uh, which is an acrylic thick paint, in multiple layers in cups, one colour above another, and they separate out in the cup, and then you pull them onto the canvas, and then you slide them around, move them around, and I thought. That is a really similar um, metaphor for me, for how I write music. Um, so I'll explain later. Have you ever um, gone onto YouTube and checked out um, some of these videos where they show you how to create um, uh, painted canvases using uh, the technique called acrylic pouring? Um, well, I, I had a go at this because I thought it was quite fun with my daughter and uh, just thought it was, it was just an, a nice technique and um, we did this over the weekend and, and uh, we did little canvases each and, and it was really good fun but it struck me that acrylic pouring is exactly the same as the way I write music um, and I thought it was a really a really quite um, obvious and um, spot-on way of illustrating how I go about things and why there is a um, there's always that air of uncertainty to, to what to what I do um, it, it's a little bit like uh, uh, you, if, if there's there's no point in going through a process that goes from one to three to four to five if you always know that five is going to be at the end of it. Uh, sometimes I go from one to three to five to six, and um, I turn around and there's a seven, and uh, that's that's the fun part of this that that it, it it's very much that that there's an unexpected element that you are you have not designed your way to an end product you are um, uh, treading a path that you think you know what you're roughly what you're doing and then something turns up uh, that was unexpected and uh, that's what I found with this acrylic uh, pouring technique it was um, it. It's one of those things where you don't need to be artistic and that might come across as being a little bit negative to all the people that produce the, the videos and I, and I don't mean that I, um, uh, I, I think there obviously are a lot of creative people that, that, that do this and, and they're um, they produce some good results. What I'm saying is that because there's there's something, and I'm going to use my fav favourite, there's something quite archaic and chaotic about it. And this is my, I, I mentioned before about the idea of being, um, that I write in a, in a balanced way between the chaotic and the ordered. And that's what, um, that's what this painting technique is all about. You, you literally do balance the paint um, but it's chaotic and you're pushing it in some ordered manner to cover the whole of the canvas while the colours separate or join or if you've put little silicon oil or soap in it it 
creates these cells, these sort of pop cells with other colours show underneath. It's a fantastic, um, you, should, you should have a go. It's well worth it. Rainy weekend, go and have a go. Get some acrylic paints and um, some canvases and uh, some pots and have a, have a go at it. You won't regret it. Um, unless you accidentally paint the cat and then that's, that could be an issue. But uh, it's, it's, that, that's the thing that you, you never know when you started um, what you're going to end up with. There's always that element of surprise. You cannot design your way to a, a, um, a, uh, an end product with the acrylic pouring technique. You can have again that element of order of I know the technique, uh, I know the colours that I'm going to layer up and I know that by the, using a particular pouring technique I'll get a particular effect. You can do all that to, to a large extent and sort of know where you are but the moment it floods out onto the canvas and you start moving things around that's the chaos that's where it starts to it goes its own way you cannot know where all the paints are going to spread and where they're, where they're not you cannot know where the cells are going to appear in in the different layers of the paint it just happens so really what i'm saying is it's instant art it's a it's a gives a wonderful vibrant um often vibrant result and it but it is instant art you don't have to be able to uh, to draw or paint to use this technique but it's a wonderful technique and that's the thing that that that's kind of what I do with the writing of music uh, I have a process and um, I'll write bits and pieces of music and I go oh that's nice and I'll, I'll put them in my library and remember them and then I put them on here I rewrite them I come up with a quick drum uh, section or rhythm section I might come up with a bass line that might go with it um, and I gradually build up these are my colors that I'm pouring into the cup when I play it all together what I come up with is not necessarily what I would have started with Again, like the uh, using the analogy of the pouring the cups on the on uh, the acrylic on the canvas. At that point, there's there's an element of not being in control, and I love that. Um, there is you you have to get the paint to spread, and you can push it one way and the other, and it's and it's and it's thick and it's produce, doing its thing. Um, once you've, you almost have to adapt at the time that you're that you're doing it, and you may even see something and think, oh, actually, no, that's 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 nice. I want to keep that. This I don't. Oh, I'll add some black to that. I'll add a black frame around it. You have to be on your toes to adapt to the design, or rather, the uh, it's not a, a, a design, not in the sense of thought about but the, the design unfolds in front of you uh, on the canvas and that's very much what happens on the canvas of of logic that, that I use as in logic the software not logic that when you play all these tracks together sometimes some things don't work and you pull them out sometimes something will suddenly appear and you think that is really nice I'll embellish that. So exactly the same technique, um, and you and it's it's really only when it's finished that you know that what you've got <coughs> works. Um, and again, you can come back to to a canvas that's dried and you, and, um, you know you've varnished it and all the colours are brought out sharp and vibrant again. And you live that with that for a while, and then you go. Oh yeah, that's quite nice. I'd like to do another one without that colour or, or without the cells or I'd like one that's maybe got with, with more white around it. Or I don't like that green that I used with the yellow and the, and the blue. It's on reflection you think that you can do it better <clears throat> and of course that's again what happens with music. You 
you put it out there and then you start to listen to it again months later and you go, ah, yeah, I wish I hadn't done that or, oh, I found a better sound now. But it, but it is, it's done and dusted and you got to leave it. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> writing music, for me, is no different from acrylic pouring on a canvas. Um, and that's nice. Look, I'll, I'll put, I'll show you what I've done. What do you think? And this is what my daughter, she did. Which one do you like? Which one do you prefer? I mean, they're the same, but they're different. Anyway, um, I think mine's better, to be honest, but don't tell my daughter.